Hi, and welcome to the overview for the Center for Civil and Human Rights exhibit located here in Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Kelly Bennett. I'm going to walk you through briefly of my recent visit to the center, to the museum. If you're familiar with Atlanta at all, the center is located walking distance from the Coke uh, exhibit as well as the Georgia Aquarium. It's adjacent to Centennial Park. In terms of parking, there are numerous parking options. There are parking decks in the area, as well as street parking. I park across the street from the center, about a block up, and I only paid $5. So it was not a very long walk, and it was not very pricey to secure my vehicle. Uh, again, this is downtown Atlanta. Uh, you will want to ensure that uh, in entrance, you'll see in a few minutes that there is a checkpoint or security point as you come into the facility. And I mention this because we went with a group and with a group, particularly with a group that has a lot of ladies, handbags, strollers, uh, diaper bags, etc. This can be a lengthy process. So please make sure that you're aware that this is uh, one of the things that you'll have to go through in terms of trying to get into the museum. So in order to expedite the process, just be aware and make sure you have all the items ready to be checked and they will flow properly. In case you wanted to follow the museum, this is their Twitter handle. Our tour began on the third floor. There are a total of three floors in the museum. And I'll pop in and out just to kind of make some key points about different items that I think are significant enough for someone looking to visit for the first time. So I hope you enjoy the video. One of the things that I like most about the museum is the interactivity. Now, I did come with my family, which included my son who was 14 and my daughter who was seven. And I found it very easy, not only for myself to navigate through the archives, but also for my children, inclusive of my seven-year-old. Uh, a lot of the uh, mechanisms are touchscreen, uh, similar to any interactivity you would have with your smartphone or your iPads, your tablets, etc. So I thought that was very intuitive on the behalf of the museum and the um, people who put this together to make the information so accessible and so user friendly. What I found is throughout the museum, much of the information was displayed in like manner. You'll see as we go throughout the video.
Just so that you're aware, in terms of the maneuverability of persons who are seniors or handicapped, there are elevators in the building. Don't think that you have to climb the stairs. There are elevators throughout the facility. Hello, my name is Bella. I am from Ukraine. I want to stay to Ukraine, the, my, my hometown, Vinica. They uh, started to kill Jewish people. In this time, they killed all family, all family of my father, all family. Uh, I have only a name, uh, name of my name. My name is Bella. This is my Jewish family. This is my Jewish name. And then I was thinking of the moments when I am in state by myself. And this life just kept you know, you know, Okay, guys, at this point, I want to talk to you a little bit about how much time we spent in the museum in total. And the reason I point this out is because this particular exhibit, this particular room that you're looking at now, it was one of the more detailed areas. In other words, we spent probably on average more time in this room than we did, I think, in any other room. Now, there's a reason for that. There were a number of pictorials, a number of videos that we did want to see. This is a broader uh, spectrum of human rights and human rights activities that you would probably want to witness. And then again, there are a number of interactive archives in the room as well, and you'll see that a little later also. I thought, although it was a little lengthy, it was still very interesting. A lot of the details uh, were very significant. We found out, obviously, things that we did not know. So I wanted to give you a perspective on the amount of time that you'll probably spend uh, in the museum. So we probably were in total in the museum two to three hours. So there's three floors, so you're looking at about an hour of floor. Unless you're with a relatively large group or a really slow reader, 
um, I would estimate anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour per floor to make sure you see uh, and be able to experience what the museum has to offer. All in all, given the time, I still say it was well worth the visit.
In this portion of the exhibit, I want to point out that if you are traveling with younger visitors, you want to be aware of some of the content in this particular area. This uh, area is heavy civil rights. There's a lot of content as it relates to sit-ins. For example, there is a sit-in counter, which duplicates, replicates, if you will, the actual activities and the day of the uh, sit-in. Uh, where you can stand in line, you can sit at the actual counter, and you can put on headsets, put your hands on the table, and you'll experience what the people experience for a minute and 43 seconds uh, sitting at that counter. Now, I believe the cutoff in terms of age was 10 years. Uh, I did not allow my daughter of seven to do this, but my son of 14 did. I did see other children in the line, but I did not see uh, anyone under the age of, you know, a, a teenager. So just be aware that in this area, certainly uh, parental involvement is going to be necessary as you kind of lead and guide your, your child through the process. The exhibit area that we're entering now turns out was one of my favorite of the museum. Many of us have heard and know this portion of civil rights. This is the March on Washington. This is the famous I Have a Dream speech. But many of you, if you're like me, did not know some of the details as it relates to other organizers, other speakers, other platforms, other agendas, other motives for that particular day. I thought the architects of this particular exhibit did an excellent job in putting together a summary of probably less than five or five and a half minutes and really telling the story and really identifying other key players in that particular day as it relates to the March on Washington. Uh, again, I thought this portion of the exhibit was very well done.
Now this portion of the exhibit hall was a pictorial overview, a summary that led into a video of the assassination and ultimately the funeral of Dr. King. The only thing I'll say here is that it was very detailed. So again, if you're traveling with younger people, you would probably want to be somewhere close around and experience this with them to ensure that you can answer any questions they may have. So this is the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I certainly enjoyed putting it together. Again, I recommend a visit. I do not work on behalf of the Center for Civil and Human Rights. I am a podcaster and I wanted to provide you some very good content. I hope you'll agree and I hope you'll share the video with someone who may be interested in attending as well.